Hello, I'm your host, Samuel Rook, and I'm here with Ed Holmes from All Star Promotions. Hi, Ed. How are you? Good. I guess I have a couple questions for you. And the first one is, tell us a little bit about All Star Promotions. What is it? What is it about? Uh, we've been in the business for about 15 years, and uh, we started out with boxing, and now it seems like everybody in California is pretty much into the MMA. So we're doing a lot of the hybrid shows. We're doing half MMA and half boxing in a ring, where if you were just to do boxing, obviously it's in a ring, MMA, just in a cage. Right. So now we're doing both, and it seems to be working pretty good. So that's something that definitely makes it unique as opposed to other um, Absolutely. companies. Absolutely. That's awesome. Yeah. So another big question, I know people don't really know all the time, what goes into making a fight? How do you pick the fighters? What is? What do you look for? Um, we actually have a matchmaker, Pete Hiranaka, mm -hmm. and we also use people outside as well. The matchmaking is the hardest part because in boxing, uh, if you have a losing record, it's really hard to take off and get to the big time. Which in MMA, if you could, a 500 fighter could still be a world champion, but you'll never find that in boxing. So it's important that you have, you know, the right manager, the right trainer, and the right fight. And so that's boxing. So now, when you pick fighters, do you look for up and comers? Do you look for the underdogs? What is it that makes you know something very sellable for you guys? Actually, we just look for good fights. You know, our our business and company, we don't own any fighters. So we're just looking for good fights, people who want to come in and put on a good show for the public. So where do you go to find the fighters? Different gyms or do you listen for names? Um, we've been in business for so long that actually they come to us. So oh. we're lucky to be in California because there's so many fighters in California. So it makes our business pretty easy. Now, are you looking to possibly merge into just MMA or do you really like the collaboration between boxing and MMA? We'll do. Sometimes we'll just do boxing, sometimes we'll just do MMA, but for us right now it works that we kind of mix them because then the public gets to be able to see both because for a while there people weren't really interested in boxing anymore. Right. But it seems now, you know, the fights are getting better, people are coming back out, but the MMA, it, it, they sell out every time, every Absolutely. time. Absolutely. It's a so, huge new, yeah. you know, thing that people have found and it's getting a huge fan base and things like that. So, do you have any favorite fighters? Do you have anybody that you root for when you watch? I'm a big Mayweather fan. Okay. You know, he's unde undefeated, so, I mean, uh, to go out and, and beat him really means you're the best, because he's the best right now in boxing. As far as MMA, where do you stand with that? MMA, I like Dos Santos. Yeah. Can't go wrong. No. <laughs> yeah. As far as your fighters that you uh, televise and things like that, do you have any people that you really have a lot of confidence in there? Actually, I don't because, we, again, we don't own any fighters. Right. We don't manage any fighters. We just put on fights. And, I mean, there's a lot of kids out here in L.A. that are pretty good fighters. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. California being, especially Southern California, a hub for, you know, athletics and mixed martial arts and things like that, especially right. since a lot of it kind of stems from here. So that's right. really awesome. Do you, how do you feel about Uriah Faber being from Southern California? Um, He's one of the best. I was going to say, don't break yeah. my heart. Yeah, one of the best. He's definitely one of the best. So now, how do you go about specifically picking a fight as far as weight class, as far as what you think is really going to sell? Like, what is it that you scout? What do you look for? Well, first of all, we look for action. You know, if a fighter's out there that's going to give us a good show, we want to kind of stick with that. The hardest problem in boxing is, is if you have a guy who's 6-0, 7-0, 8-0, <laughs> it's very difficult to match him up with somebody because they know where he comes from, like if it was Robert Garcia's gym from Oxnard, they have a lot of great fighters in Oxnard. So there's some real serious gyms that people don't want to even begin to, to talk about because of the fact that they know that they're the guy. You know, Freddie Roach puts out some great fighters. So it's Freddie Roach, Robert Garcia, and a few others that it's hard to match make those kids because they're undefeated fighters and they're very serious about becoming world champions where other gyms kids just want to go in there and they want to box and to match that up it's very difficult so you have to find not just one matchmaker you have to use three four five matchmakers to make a fight happen absolutely and especially with the fear of going in with somebody who's got a 6 and 0 7 and 0 record it's very difficult to find someone who's willing to take on that level of competition exactly you know if if you have you know a 5 and 3 record 5 and 4 record um, it's going to be pretty difficult for you to take that road that's going to get you to the top where in MMA you can have five wins you know two losses three losses and you're still there and right. if you look at Randy Couture i mean you know he's probably 
you know, won a lot of fights, but he's also lost a lot of fights. Absolutely. In boxing, that doesn't exist. If you lose a lot of fights, you're not going to go to the top. Absolutely. Now, on the flip side of that, do you find that there are some people who have a 6-0, 7-0 record as far as boxing goes, and they'll find a fight that they find a lot of competition in, but stray away from it because they're worried that this could really damage their, their perfect record? I'm glad you said that. Yeah, there's a lot of truth to that. You know, basically what they're looking for are wins, and that's what makes our job so difficult because there's a lot of guys out there that want to win. So, you know, really the fights that we should all be seeing in California are the guys, you know, really are the 5-0 and against a 4-0, and 7-0 and against an 8-0. and That way you find out real fast, is this guy going to go to the top? Because a lot of guys, they'll be 10-0, 15-0, and really the talent isn't there. It's just that they've been very well taken care of. And the fights have almost been selected in exactly. favor of them. Exactly. Oh. So now, what are your relationships with the gyms as far as um, how you scout these fighters, or at least how you try and pick the matches and things like that? What is, how does this work? Yeah, right now there's not a lot of promoters in California that are doing what we're doing and have the venues that we have. We have the Quiet Cannon, we have the Commerce Casino, and we have Downtown Bonaventure. So they call us a lot, you know, you know can you put us on, can you put us on? But really what's happening is the public still isn't coming out and supporting these venues. So it's the fighter that sells the ticket. And it's important for us to pick the right fighters so we are successful as well. So it's a business. It's a business between the promoter and the fighter knowing that, hey, you know what? You take care of us, we'll take care of you. But if it's just about the promoter, it's very difficult. You know, the economy is real bad right now, so there's not a lot of people coming out and sponsoring the shows. Mm -hmm. So we have to really rely on each other, the fighter and the promoter definitely more loyal relationships exactly. that you look for. Exactly. Is there a hot spot necessarily where you find a lot of just where you kind of hit these great fighters, these great matches, you know, yeah. that you can depend on people? Right now, I think Robert Garcia has that going on because he works with a lot of up and coming fighters and he does a really good job of uh, what, he, what he's doing is basically if, if you don't really have it, he's going to go tell you to find something else to do because he's looking for that guy who's really dedicated and going to make that commitment. And that's very difficult for someone to do that. Boxing's tough. It's a hard, hard sport. Is there something that you look for specifically in um, a fighter? Is it something that you see in somebody that you really just know is going to sell? Has there ever been a time where somebody's kind of like, ah, this isn't the way to go, but you've really felt strongly about this is the person, just give it a chance? Uh, we had a fighter like that, Cleotis Pandarvis, Mookie, and uh, we still feel that one day he'll probably be a, a champion. But you really have to be dedicated to the sport, and you can still have a lot of talent, but you really don't want to put the time into being that. So in order to be a world champion, you have to love the gym, you have to love the run, you have to love every part of boxing, because if not, you won't go to the top. All right, so let's go more into the MMA side. Can you tell me a little bit about um, the specific gyms that you hit for as far as fighters from there? Well, we work a lot with uh, Adrenaline and um, uh, Eric Paulson's gym, CSW, and also um, Millennium. And it seems like, again, just like Oxnard, those are the real fighters. Those are the kids that really put their time in and dedicated. So they make good fights. And that's what we're really looking for. And MMA, because it's all about the action, standing up and giving the crowd you know, what they want. Because nobody wants to see two guys just on the ground wrestling. Yeah, so. it becomes a little bit, you know, tedious. Like, OK, stand up kind of thing. Exactly. Now, as far as what makes these gyms, these specific gyms, like you mentioned, Adrenaline and Millennia, what makes them a little different? Do they do certain things when they train their fighters? What kind of sets them above that you seek the fighters from there? They're really concerned about wins and losses. You know, they don't really want their fighters to go out and take a fight if they think they're going to lose it. So, you know, they're making sure that they're putting in their time. In MMA, it's, it's, a, it's a cross training. Mm -hmm. And so you have to box, you have to do some judo, you have to do some wrestling. You know, it's a little bit of all of it today. And so that's what you get out of those gyms. You know, Eric Paulson, I mean, he's a genius in the sport. And so that's one of the best gyms. That's one of my favorite gyms. You know, anytime I go there, I see a lot of talent there. So, so you're getting an extremely well-rounded fighter, which obviously helps your company out as far as getting butts in seats. Exactly. And they're bigger gyms. They're the bigger gyms. OK. So. And as far as collaborations, mm -hmm. what, you know, what do you have going with there? Um, I mean, some gyms you can walk into and they're not really friendly. Gyms, again, like Adrenaline, uh, like Millennium, and Eric Paulson's gym, it, they greet you, you know, they give you that respect and, you know, they, they know that they can do business with you, so the doors are pretty open, where a lot of gyms aren't, you know, they're just about 
the gym and that's it. So it makes it difficult for us, but to open up the door for us and, and say, hey, come on in and see what's going on, it makes it a lot easier. This is a very good marriage you have between them, hence the collaboration. Exactly. Okay, that is great. Mm -hmm. All right, that's all the time we have here with Ed Holmes today. I hope you enjoyed it, and we'll see you next time on IEMMA.